For the last 13 days, I've been led by the Lord to write a series of articles on the Psalms of Ascent, which are Psalms 120 through 134. And I was led to do that exactly 15 days before the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets, which begins the evening of this coming Sunday. And so I will write a blog on the 15th Psalm of Ascent on Sunday. Uh, you can find these at my website, which is www.zadik.us. And today I felt led to read the 13th Psalm of Ascent, which uh, is something that I think corresponds with what the Lord has been showing uh, a prophetess by the name of Anna recently. The psalm begins like this. Remember, O Lord, in David's favor, all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. The promise of God's eternal kingdom, God's house, came to David, but God did not allow David to see its fulfillment. Why not? Well, in 1 Chronicles 22, verses 6 through 10, the Lord tells us, Then David called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name, because you have shed so much blood before me on the earth. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest. I will give him rest from all his surrounding enemies. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name. He shall be my son, and I will be his father. And I will establish his royal throne in Israel forever. Again, that is First Chronicles chapter 22, verses 6 through 10. David was a man of action and a man of blood. He conquered kingdoms in the name of the Lord. He was a man after God's own heart, and his ministry was great indeed, yet he remained a man of flesh, a carnal man subject to sin. And the scripture declares, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. David could not inherit the kingdom, but today we can. Why us? Yesterday, we made the twelfth ascent, the step into God's rest. Yesterday, we laid down our own plans, our own designs for great ministries for God. Yesterday, we quieted our souls before Him, determined to hope only in Him, and ceased to occupy ourselves with matters too great for us. Yesterday, we gave up our guns and our bows and arrows and determined that we would not be men of blood. I will not die with a man's blood on my hands, will you? I am not a man of blood, are you? Today we become sons, the prophetic fulfillment of Solomon, son of David. Psalm 132 verses 6 through 7 goes on and says, Lo, we heard of it at Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Ephrata is Bethlehem, the place of our Lord's birth. We know of Jesus and we know he was born in Bethlehem, Ephrata. We always heard that the word Emmanuel, which means God with us, referred only to him. But no, the prophecy concerns us. God is with us, within us, and soon we will become the very habitation of God as the rest of this wonderful psalm makes clear. Verse 8 says, Arise, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. When we fully and completely enter God's rest, then we will literally become his resting place. At that moment of complete rest, he will transform these lowly bodies into immortal bodies. At that moment, the ark of his might permeates our entire being. His law will become part of our very being, and we will be enabled to obey it perfectly. Rather than consuming it any longer, his word, his manna, will consume us. 
and we will become living expressions of the Word of God. We, now the dead in our sins, the almond branch that was dead, will have budded into eternal life. And verse 9 goes on. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. It is at this time that God clothes us with righteousness, His righteousness. Finally, we become the priests of the Most High, which He has ordained us to be. Our ordination comes not from man, for only God can ordain His priests, who will now arise in the order of Melchizedek, just as Jesus was of that order. Verse 10 says, For the sake of your servant David, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. This promise I'm speaking of is sure, because God made particular promises to David concerning the eternal nature of his throne. We who believe in Jesus and have determined to obey the gospel he has given us are the anointed ones spoken of here. God will not turn his face from us. In fact, the songs of ascent are all about us ascending into the very presence of God, where we will actually see God's face. Then, verses 11 and 12 of this Psalm 132 tell us God's specific promise regarding this. The Lord swore to David a sure oath from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons, plural, keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their sons also forever shall sit on your throne. Do you see this? This is talking about Jesus his one son, and then the other sons, which are us, the overcomers, who will also sit on that throne. What follows in this psalm is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting spiritual concepts in all scripture, which is that God's people literally become New Jerusalem, the eternal dwelling place of God and the Lamb of God. Verses 13 through 17 go on and say, For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his dwelling place. Now remember, Zion is the same as Jerusalem, which we saw earlier in the series speaks of New Jerusalem that you see in Revelation chapter 21. Again, for the Lord has chosen Zion, Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Who are her poor? That's us right now. We are the poor, and we mourn over our, our poorness, our poverty of spirit. Her priests I will clothe with salvation, and her saints will shout for joy. There I will make a horn to sprout for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. This passage also makes it clear that no one is fully saved until the time of their glorification, until the time when God has completed his work upon their souls and closed them with righteousness and salvation. At this time, his chiseling upon us, his affliction of us, ceases and takes us and places us into the eternal city, the city we have sojourned toward all our lives. Then we will shout for joy and then our horn, our strength, will become evident to all. At that time, these overcomers will begin to rule with a rod of iron and will begin to bring the entire earth into the subjection of their king. And so this song ends. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but on him his crown will shine. Him refers to the overcomers. Now I want to summarize this by saying this. The prophecies given to Anna by the Lord recently show that this event is about to take place. Months ago, God was showing her that she and others were going to go through tribulation in their flesh. As she began to obey what he showed her, that revelation changed from that given to carnal Christians to the revelation that God gives to overcoming spiritual Christians. God took Anna a long way in a short time. And I believe that her words affected other sleeping Christians and that they too have now awakened. And I rejoice for that and I rejoice for the ministry that God has given her. The time is upon us. 
If you don't understand these words, then it's probably too late to avoid tribulation. Nevertheless, the Lord will provide you protection through the overcomers who will soon be glorified. So continue in hope and faith. If you just woke up, then pray that God will hide you in the shadow of his wing. For our God is faithful. He is merciful. He loves you. He will protect you. In Jesus' name. Amen.